Good afternoon. My name is Joe Bandel, and I am the last Rosicrucian. Today we're going to continue our talk about uh, morality and spirituality. So we've seen the plan. We talked about it last time. We've seen how people, how society in general, the rational atheists, if you will, are trying to do away with spirituality and replace it with morality, social morality. What's that about? How will it work? Perhaps we can predict the outcome by recognizing the larger pattern, and that's what I'm going to try to do uh, as we talk about this. You get the big picture, you kind of understand some of these things, and you get the antidote for them. Under the old spiritual model, if we give in to our human passions and desires, we are immoral. If we develop strength of will, resisting our human passions and desires, and instead follow the still small voice of our conscience, which speaks within our hearts, we are acting in a moral way. That's the spiritual path. That's the way uh, of the mystery schools, the traditions. But no, wait, I guess I have that wrong. If we follow the Ten Commandments or some other religious doctrine that tells us what is right and what is wrong, then, we are, then we're acting in a moral way. So moral means to follow the law, God's law, that external law. Okay. Uh, Again, they're, they're, I just slipped into that internal authority and i got to go back. I'm being a little tongue-in-cheek here. External authority, God, way out there in heaven. The Ten Commandments, the Bible, way over there. External authority for God. So, being moral means to follow the law, God's law. This is an important clue. Apparently, immorality is about breaking the law, not about whether the law is just or unjust, not whether it's God's law or human law. If you break the law, you are not moral. If you follow the law, you're moral. Hey, do you start to see, the, is it clicking? Are the dots connecting here? The law, follow the law, don't break the law, moral. It's all black and white, that's simple. That means good is only legality. And morality is nothing more than adherence to the law, following the law. Forget about spirituality, it can be man-made law. Now, see where this is where it's going, this is the idea. And the person who carries the law most strongly within their heart is the one who is the most moral. So we have come to the point where we are supposed, supposed to live our lives for the law, not for ourselves, not for, not if even for God or spiritual aims, but for the law, that's what we're supposed to live for. But what if you don't like a law? What if you, they pass a law and you don't like it? What if you feel deep down in your heart that the law is wrong? That doesn't matter. The morality of the law is to be held intact regardless of your own feelings about it. It doesn't matter how you feel. The law, it's the law. You got to do it, right? It's that external authority, but it's not even spiritual now. That external authority is man made and man driven. The morality of the law is to be held intact, regardless of your own feelings about it. But what if your will is so strongly opposed to it that you need to resist or you can't live with yourself. Well, that's easy. 
You can beg for mercy or beg for forgiveness or beg to be released. Yeah, right. As if anybody's going to believe that it's okay to follow the internal voice of your conscience and the Christ spirit within your heart. They're scared to death of that. They want to have power over the individual. In a land of censorship, like we are fast approaching, the person who evades censorship is acting immorally, and the person who accepts censorship is acting morally. What about the person who sets up an underground press? Or they're on the internet, and they're trying to avoid being censored by YouTube or Twitter. You know, they so they, they they go to something that's not censored like that. I guess you've got to call them, him or her, immoral and imprudent as well, especially uh, if they try to sneak something on YouTube or Twitter that's not acceptable. Or perhaps you can do what I'm trying to do. Use new words in new ways to share new thoughts because I'm not talking about hate. I'm not talking about violence. I'm talking about love and I'm talking about free speech because this country was founded on the concept and the idea of free speech and that's in the process of being taken away. And that's the reason, really, that, really, that's the reason why I'm making these videos is because I believe in free speech. And I believe that if people like me and people like you don't stand up for it, it's going to be taken away. It's that simple. It's going to be taken away, and there's not even going to be a spiritual morality anymore. It's going to be a man-made based morality that's the law. And it's based on the law. You break the law, you're a bad person. Even if the law is bad. Oh, but laws can't be bad. I forgot. Have you ever heard of a bad law? Do they ever pass laws that... they? There's, there's laws that are passed that have been found to be unconstitutional. This happens a lot. This happens all the time, and they just, some of them get challenged and some don't. Now, the Internet Bill of Rights is an important thing that we can be talking about, we can be thinking about, because what that is asking is that the Bill of Rights, the human rights, the God-given rights that we have in America should be extended to the Internet. So that means free speech should be extended to the Internet. Copyright should be extended to the Internet. All of these things, what's, what's a person's should belong to them. It should not be taken advantage of. We need to take back our power I'll, I'll tell you something else. In every generation, the game is rigged. And the people at the top try to stay at the top. The people at the bottom struggle to get higher, but a lot of times they can't because they're held down. They're trying to break through a barrier, and that barrier is very real. Well, also, in every generation, there's a frontier. With the pioneers, it used to be go out west. It was a pioneer, a, a frontier is unregulated and unknown. And people go there because the game is rigged every place else. So they go there and they try to make a name for themselves. 
try their luck. Some people win, some people don't. And gradually, that frontier, whatever it is, gets populated, it gets civilized, and ultimately it becomes regulated and controlled. And then rigged. But the Internet is not rigged yet. It's beginning to be. They're trying to. They're trying to control it. But you know what? Even if, even if they do, if they do succeed in controlling and regulating the Internet, there will be a new frontier that will appear. A new unregulated area of human potential and human creativity. That's because that's how the evolutionary process works. So we can fight for our freedom now, but it's not the end of the world if, if we lose this battle, if that gets taken away. There is always something. There's always a new frontier. And right now, people are leaving Facebook. They're leaving Twitter. And you know what? The whole reason of this conflict is to sway public opinion. And Google, Facebook, Twitter, if people leave, then they can't be swayed. So it's defeating the whole purpose of, of narrative because uh, if people leave the if people leave then in the main street media. If people leave the main street media, how are they going to get the narrative that's wanted? So it's, it's it's dividing our society right now. And that's a good thing because these things are timely. These are questions that need to be answered. What kind of morality do you choose? Do you choose a, a spiritual morality of the heart of the conscience? Or are you going to be one of the ones that believes that it, the next law that is passed and affects you is what's moral? And you'll live by that. I guess we each need to make that decision for ourselves. Well, I'm out of time. I hope you have enjoyed this. My purpose is to get you to think a little bit. Feel free to comment. Thank you. Good night.